Welcome to The Golden Flower. Join Angela Levesque and myself, Gemma Kaufman, as we explore the beauty of living a creative life and dive into the depths of consciousness, the archetypal journey, and the artistic process. Through insightful personal stories and inspiring conversation, we invite you to expand the parameters of your being and trust the aliveness within. This is The Golden Flower, a sanctuary for your creative soul. When I talk about the the self-reclamation journey of you know walking the the creative path a lot of it for me personally has been you know that I would expend and lose energy you know worrying too much about um perceptions of what I would say or what I would do you know like being in this place of judgment and then like you say here 20 years later having like said yes to that to that wrestle of I don't accept (laughs) that I should be hemorrhaging my energy in this way I mean part of it is uh, would you agree with this as you get older you realize the value of your life force so much more it's just like it's absolutely intolerable (laughs) and you, you know it's that whole quote about you know how youth is wasted on young people because you think it's just like this you know infinite reserve that's that's not going to run dry but for, for me there's definitely a sense these days that you know it's time to it's time to speak out it's time to write down ideas it's time to have a voice definitely not time to be worrying about what other people think <laughs> And I think, you know, in terms of those archetypal stages, a lot of women say, yeah, it's great to get to the the goddess crone place because, you know, the maiden is fraught with, what's the word, when just being subject to expectations of others, your attention. Fraught with insecurities. Fraught with insecurities, yeah. Yeah, there was... um... For me, my 20s was just completely ravaged by insecurity. <laughs> and now you're right, as as we get older, um, that becomes less important. You, you just realize you don't have that time to waste anymore on, do I, am I pretty enough? Am I thin enough? Am I smart enough? I mean, you know, all of those sorts of things. But I want to say, I had this really interesting conversation the other day with my girlfriend about life force energy. And she's like, I really think it's not, you know, when we think about, pardon me, getting older and aging, she's like, I think we just start to disallow the life force energy, you know, like people get older and maybe we, we talk specifically like about retirement and then they just go and they watch TV. They don't, they just allow less and less space within themselves for that life force energy to move through them. And then eventually the life force just stops and says, okay, well, I guess we're done here. If you're not going to continually like keep that fire burning, if you're not going to continue to stoke that fire, I've got other places to be. (laughs) And that's, and that's what death is. And so for you to hear you talk about, it's not the time to keep your mouth shut It's not the time to, you know, stop working with the creative force and to engage with all of these things. That to me is like, you're still there. You're still available for that life force. And that's thinking about how we move through these cycles is just realizing that that energy might show up in a different way, but it's still available to us if we're available to to meet it where it's at too. Yeah, we make the space, you know. Is it fair to say that artists and <clears throat> creatives don't really age in the same way? And I say it's, and I would say it's because of making that space. It's like, I think the creative journey is defined by making intentional space to, to engage, to explore with some kind of creative modality. And in that, you're making a space of inquiry. Um, and I think that's what makes, again, talk about this rite of passage is that 
because of that space and because of what occurs there, it is likely that your perspectives are going to fall out of step with a lot of the people around you. And you become less of a servant of reality, to use some of Cassia's wonderful phrasing, and you become a creator. You occupy a different position. And within that, you know, if you just think about what you were talking about, like the idea of channeling life force, and, you know, you use that example of like someone who loses their their role and into retirement and they don't have that space that playground for the energy to play it will stagnate it's not it's not um hasn't got space uh to move that there does become a, like a bit of a tipping point where it's like you have to make that choice about what you're going to consciously make space space for and that choice is going to define the second half of of, of your life um and you you will experience the results of that um because for people who have got stuff going on you know they really value their time and their resources and they they have this kind of um what is it like this innate sense of gratitude to have time and space to like work on things like they're never going to fall into that category of not knowing what to do or you know feeling like uh that the passing of time is like some kind of I don't know non-event you know <laughs> it's just a really different way of being so yeah. well I like what you how you started this conversation talking about choice because the only constant is is change right like so we are Things are always in like dynamic progression, but how do we choose to engage with that, with that change, with the pretty much the only constant that exists, right? So it's, we're always going to be evolving in some way, but how do we do that in a way where we take advantage of that life force energy, where we stay feeling vibrant, where we still can follow that aliveness that we talk about so much? And it, that is, it's like the choice to say, and the, the, I guess the consciousness, the sense that yes, things are in this dynamic flow, this ever emergent experience. And how do I uh, choose to engage with that? Yeah, I mean, the how to, I think, is that you actively choose to create space. If there's anything that ever has value, you honor that value by giving it space. If it's a friend, you give them time. If it's an object, you give it a place to be and so forth. It's the same thing. And I think that's really like the the tipping point around, you know, what's, what's the choice to be made in terms of like, you know, we've had past conversations that... The creative journey exists in a set apart place that is waiting for us and is calling for us, but we cannot go there until we choose it, until we claim it. And we often have to choose it and claim it against the tide. We do it in spite of so often, you know, it's not like we grow up with the people that, you know, are closest to us with the talking, talking about when and how we will do the inevitable thing which is to self-actualize in some way through creative expression that is never on the table to discuss it's not a thing you know you can talk about retirement you can talk you know you can talk about your long-term job plans and you can talk about your pension you can talk about these are considered the inevitables but the idea that you'll make space to to wrestle with your own psyche consciousness and and being through some kind of creative mo modality is like the most essential thing that you can do that will create space to ensure that life force keeps flowing so that you can be present in 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 every capacity in life you know hearing you talk about how sometimes have making that conscious choice to engage with this creative journey sometimes sets you apart and i was thinking about that is true. And yet 
we still need to have people around us. And so I was uh, doing some reading and they were talking about like, we see this cycle of birth, death, rebirth. We see it even just with the, you know, sunrise, sunset. We see it with the seasons, right? <clears throat> and if you think about the trees and in the autumn and they start to lose their leaves, that that's significant that they do lose their leaves because those leaves then provide for the same um, the same processes for like, if those leaves weren't there, the worms would die in the winter. The bugs wouldn't have a place to nestle to make it through until the spring. And so we need to make sure that we are still moving through these processes within an ecosystem, understanding that we are part of an ecosystem. So last time we talked all about the importance of having allies as we move through the creative process. And I think that that's important to, uh, we don't have to revisit those points, but just remember that these cycles exist within a larger um, ecology. And that as much of, you know, it, it, as, as true as it is to say that we are, um, on this journey alone, we need to remember that as our leaves fall, as things decay, and that doesn't even just mean physically, even if we think about it in a smaller sense, in a micro cycle of like a project or a chapter of our life, that those things that we are releasing, those things that we are surrendering to, then also give birth and give rise to the you know, the stuff that's within our orbit, the community, the eco ecosystem with that we exist in. And I thought that that was such a cool thing to think about is that stuff that we think is death or decay provides opportunities for other things, whether it's energetically, whether, you know, it's actual like physical resources or things like you passing on stuff that no, no longer you know, works for you or resonates or is in alignment that somebody else then can take up those tools or those resources for their own growth. And just remembering that this also exists individually, but it also exists within a larger um, sphere. Mm. Yeah. It seems like there's a concurrent theme about space, the creating of space as you were talking. I felt that you were touching on the ex the importance of letting go um that for example i would say a big part of this journey is uh the creative journey as the rite of passage is letting go of the need to share the same worldview um perspective in order to connect like it's not like a pre uh, prerequisite i don't actually require that or need that and therefore that's that it is possible to have uh, close friendships and connections and to have a healthy relationship with people who experience life differently and have different priorities I think that's like one of the steeper arcs of the journey but that's kind of where it's it, it's it's pointing to I think initially it's a bit of a like you've got to we took we start that we started this whole podcast with the rebellious f you I'm going for it I'm the rebel and here we are seem we seem to be talking like that that opposite end where it's like a much more integrated slow pace of making space for that which we value and allowing the alchemy of choosing that space to affect all the areas of our life to ensure that everything has has a space as it as it needs as it as it is you know not to be fighting with the way that things are to be kind of like I think it's that thing um, when we talk about the dynamics, it's like you're rooted in, in what you know, but there's always a bracket around what you know for now. <laughs> you're preparing to constantly revisit and that you've got to be so humble to be like, I was so sure about X and now it looks like this and now it looks like that. And, you know, there's a Thank lot of... There's a lot of movement and that's also a difficult thing I think for some of like your wider environment to keep up with oh I thought you thought this and now you think this and you were doing that and now you're doing this like yeah <laughs> that's normal for this kind of when you make that kind of space and you engage and you play in this kind of way you're gonna move quickly through things some things will endure that's the beauty of this 
time of life I think is that you have a little chance to do an audit and be like ah oh, looks like some of the some things are here to stay I don't know now we're tipping into a whole other conversation but well, it could be a good one I uh I think it was so refreshing to hear you say being able to have friends who don't have the same view as you and that not mean anything more than oh wow that's interesting let's let's explore that. Let's see where the same where because there's, I don't know if it's the same um, dynamic in the UK or in Portugal, but in the United States, everything is, if, unless you are on my team, you're bad, evil, wrong, whatever. And so there's no opportunity. Like I was having this conversation with somebody the other day and he was talking about, he's like, oh, he's okay, but um, he thinks this. And I was like, who cares? So that's interesting. Like, why does it have to be bad that he has a different way of seeing something than you? I'm like that. I, I love that you said that because I, I almost said the exact words. I said, it's not a prerequisite um, for friendship in my mind for somebody to have the exact same thoughts mm -hmm. as I do or the same values even. Like, I think that that's what makes it interesting, right? I mean, think about where art comes from. Think about where creativity comes from. There, we've always we've talked a lot about that tension. Like, it's okay to have that tension in in worldviews with people around you, and I think that's necessary. I think it's actually, in a sense, like that's where some of the nourishment, some of the the juicy parts of of our creative process comes from thinking about things in different ways, hearing different ideas than you're used to, contemplating values that might not be your own. And even if you don't come to the same conclusion of, of that person, that process of, of even if it's just reaffirming who you are, what you think, where you stand, all of that, that's where some of that inspiration comes from. And even some of that discontent even working through that discomfort from having ideas that are not necessarily your own. I think that that's um, where a lot of ideas and, and the, the spark of creativity comes from. So it was so refreshing to hear you say that because it's in my world, people, it's like, if you're not on my team, I don't want to hear what you have to say. And I think that that not only does that not bring us to the world that we want to live in I think if we were to 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 take that all the way through and say does this mindset lead us to the world that that you know the ideal world that we'd like to see but it also uh, that doesn't spark anything that doesn't inspire anything within either it's a tricky one this terrain because in a way I'm hearing that you're you're basically describing how you are um how your your value system shows up which is to make space for the disagreement for the contrast for the ways that things don't fit but i guess someone who doesn't have space for that is also being true to their value system which is they do not value the space for those kind of mismatches that is not a part of their value system they're kind of like in a way everyone's just kind of expressing in their own way like you say, they're, they're, they're in attentions, they're in a dynamics, what the value systems are, and it shows up in where space is made. I keep coming back to that. I do think it's the thread through this conversation that we learn on a lot about where we choose space and where we encounter it and where we don't. And it's, it's very easy to feel like, oh, of course, it's much better to have space. <laughs> Maybe that's a conversation for another day. It's hard not to feel like the, the you know, we obviously have a strong bias and preference for the values of space and everything that it means that you get to enjoy. I guess we'd have to have a chat with someone who might want to talk about, I don't even know how you could have a conversation about that because without like making assumptions, but it's kind of, we all we all get something from us value systems is payoffs left right and center we have we get a payoff for choosing you know the pros and cons of choosing the creative path and making that space and then there'll be the pros and cons of not making that space and um I, I do think it comes back though to your idea of certainty 
I yeah. think that, and this, you know, I'll speak for myself, but I, I think you would probably agree that being able to be in those liminal spaces, to be mm -hmm. able to uh, hang out in places that are uncertain um, is difficult for people. And I think that that's why there's such a, a need to like, you know, draw a line in the sand and this is where I stand. And if you're not there with me, um, I, I can't, I can't have you in my space because it creates too much uncertainty and I'm not okay with that. So I think that being, you know, we've talked about art as a form of, or our creative process and creativity as a, a form of personal growth. It's allowed us to be able to navigate, I think, those and and kind of swim in that uncertainty in a way without uh, feeling it necessary to just get really like rigid. Like it allows for that, that sense of flexibility um, because we have the opportunity, we have the tools to be able to like say, okay, this makes me feel uncomfortable. This makes me feel mad or angry or whatever the case may be. And I have a way to to transmute that. I have a way to modulate it. I have a way to play with it in a way that's safe, um, a way that's exploratory, a way that maybe in fact might even be inspirational to take that and turn it into a painting or a poem or a, you know, any sort of work of art. And, but I think it comes down to people, everything in this world right now, especially in the United States. I mean, in this past week we've had a, an attempted assassination on an ex-president we had another president step down like we've it's an uncertain time here like there's so much going on that's just kind of pushing and pulling us and I think it goes back even to the beginning of that conversation about where our power is and how we how we move that power uh, you know outward and back inward with so much swirling around us like how do we not you know want to to just grasp on things that say, okay, at least I don't know much, but I know this. And it's easier for me to have people who know this as well around me versus other people who, who feed into that chaos and, and um, uncertainty. There's a lot of vulnerability and certainty um, that I've had to come to terms with as well, though, um, that, you know, there's, because as I listen, I'm like nodding in agreement to this beautiful description of swimming in uncertainty. And then, and then of course, applying that to how things are, you can see how very helpful it is to be able to exist in the liminal space of neither here nor there. And then I think there's also something maybe more, more for me than, than you, which I'm like, I know that I'm more comfortable in those spaces for a reason, <laughs> you know, than either here nor there is. And, and uh, maybe there's something to be said at some point that it has to be called, the line um, has to be drawn. But I was also listening to what you're saying. So it's like somehow coming back to this notion of space, having space to know what one is thinking, why, why one might be thinking it and to choose it to actually be able to, to choose how we are thinking um, is perhaps the rite of passage of humanity, you know, like to, to know what you're thinking or why you're thinking it and, and to, to choose your, your thoughts. I mean, I don't know, like a personal example of this is, you know, way back at the very beginning of the painting journey, I'm just right at the beginning of like experiencing myself someone very creatively engaged and being like oh I think there's, there's something here for me that I can like grow into and expand into and knowing that I had a very like overactive thinking like I burned my adrenals out with worrying and obsessive thoughts and uh, the relationship I was in at the time was very destructive very difficult probably could get labeled toxic these are toxic relationship and so a huge amount of my energy would get spent on obsessing on the difficulties. And then at some point I was just like, look what goes on in my mind. Look what goes on in my mind. And because I've had the experience of choosing to put my attention 
onto the painting, it occurred to me that I could choose to put my attention somewhere else in my mind. And it was such like a crude thing to like rip my, <laughs> rip my obsessive brain off the thing that had been so used to chewing on and be like, what about something over there? <laughs> like something that could be, you know, and it'd be like, why don't you think about, you know, what you might want to be doing? with your day or you know put your effort into at the time it was just like everything was on the table like write your cv do this do that like and it, i can still really remember like you know the sound of velcro it kind of sounds like that to me like that habitual place it's 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 something to be reckoned with right becoming familiar with the terrain of your own mind and being like us being able to be reflexive enough to ask yourself do I choose do I choose this do I own these this thinking process or am I reactive am I simply reacting it's that thing about reactive versus to react or to create react or to create and yeah you, the U.S. is going to have to decide <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's, I can't remember the exact quote, and I, this is a bummer, but there's a Carlos Castaneda quote that's like, you can either make yourself miserable or you can make yourself, it's either happy, content, something like that, but the amount of work is the same. Right, right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that lands, yeah. <laughs> so, quite, yeah, that, that was kind of like the dawning realization for me at that time was just like, look, I'm expending huge energy either way, like, let me see some fruits from, from my labor or just more of the same, more of the same, more of the same. Yes. Mm, nice. Okay.